Hello, my name is Lakin Oyefeso, and I'm a solutions consultant with Beyond 20. Today, we'll be going over how to create an external connection to SCCM so that you can import computers into the computer object in your CMDB. We'll want to go ahead and create a new blueprint. And then you'll want to go to the Manager's drop down menu and select External Connections. I've already gone ahead and created this connection. To create a new connection, you'll want to go ahead and click on the plus button here. I am going to edit the connection that I've already created. So this is the external connection wizard. This will walk you through the steps of creating your external connection. The first step is determining whether or not you have a trusted agent or not. If you are configured through a trusted agent, you'll want to set this step up accordingly. The next step is determining your data source. It can be either an Oracle server, a SQL server, ODBC connection. This will be using a SQL server. You'll want to specify exactly where you'll be pulling your data from. Um, your data can actually be located on the same machine as your share, your uh, share will set up. It can be on a different server, and you can also specify via an IP address. You don't want to go ahead and specify what database you'll be pulling the information from if you're using a SQL server. So this is the database name. So we'll be pulling our information from that location. Then you'll want to go ahead and set up the authentication. Um, you can either authenticate using Windows authentication or you can specify a user ID and password. And if your connection is set up correctly up to this point, it is quite possible that this will auto populate for you. Um, so this is the database owner or schema. If your connection is set up correctly, you should be able to not have to do anything at this step. This may auto populate for you. If you hit the drop down menu, you should see some options there. And then for the SQL Server connection pooling, just go ahead and click next. And then you'll want to go ahead and name your connection. This can be anything that anything that you choose whatever works out best for your situation so the external connection wizard puts together a connection string that it's going to use to connect to to your, your data source um, review this and then you'll want to go ahead and test the connection so we'll see that the connection test was successful so we should be all set so now that we've built the external connection, we're going to want to go ahead and map the computer object to the fields in SCCM. So you'll want to go ahead and select map to external data. And this will be the external data mapping wizard. This will help map the fields in SCCM to the fields you have in Sherwell. So you'll want to specify the data location. You'll see here that we are importing our data and we'll be importing that data through a scheduled task that we'll configure shortly. So go ahead and click on the next button. So you'll want to specify the external connection. So this is where you pick the external connection that you just configured in the external connection wizard. So we'll go ahead and select that connection. So we'll see that the connection already exists in my example here. So I'm going to go ahead and click yes just to demo this. So we've jumped ahead now to the point where the table is now populated. The list of tables is populated. Um, that took a few minutes here. But what you'll see is all of the available tables that you're able to choose to map your data to. So we're going to go ahead and choose the B20 SCCM workstation version 2. Okay, so now we're at the point where we can begin to map the fields. What we'll do is we'll go ahead and click on the Map All Fields button. 
And now we're being prompted if all of the new fields should automatically be created if no match is found. I'm going to go ahead and click no because if you, for example, if you have a situation where the device name field should be mapped to, let's say, the host name field, then you want to be able to map that manually without having the system automatically create another device name field for you. So we'll go ahead and let the system map all of the fields that already exist. But for the fields that don't exist, we'll manually map those. So I'm going to go ahead and if you click add, you should see all of the remaining fields that need to be mapped. So you'll see we have a number of fields here that need, need to be mapped. Now one of the things I've noticed with ShareWell is if you go to map one of the remaining fields and you try to use an existing field, the existing field doesn't always show up. So what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to close out of here. We'll, we'll let the system map these fields. We'll determine which field we want to be the, the field that holds the unique key. And then we'll click finish. So now, if you look at the business object properties, you'll notice that we have an external data connection here that we can go ahead and, and work with. So now you'll see if you go ahead and click add again, in this area, you'll still see the remaining fields from SCCM that need to be mapped. But now you'll notice that if you have an existing field, you'll be able to map to that field. So I'm going to map the computer name field to the host name. And then you would go through and continue to map the remaining available fields to whatever fields you have available in your config computer object. So now you'll see that we've gone ahead and mapped all of the existing fields from SCCM. We have a number of fields here that have been mapped. So now when we import data from SCCM using a scheduled task, all of these fields that would have data populated in them in SCCM that data will not be populated in ShareWell. So let's go ahead and take a look at how we schedule the, uh, the task to, to perform the import. So we're going to go ahead and close out of this. Now, normally you would go ahead and publish this blueprint because you want to make sure you keep all of that configuration. Because this is all configuration that I've already built and published, I'm going to just go ahead and close out of this blueprint, but do not forget to publish, otherwise you'll lose all of your data. So I'm going to go ahead and close out of here. Now we'll go into the scheduling area and we'll look at the scheduled task. So I already have a scheduled task configured. That is the data warehouse config computer task. So if we look at that, we have the scheduled group, which for this example is set to default, the name of the task. Then if we look at the schedule, you see it's a recurring task that runs every night at 10 p.m. Then if we look at the action, you see that the action is to import external data. So if we look at the configuration of that, that external data import, you'll see that the business object is set to config computer using the external connection that we configured in the blueprint. This import is set to update existing record, records. You could also set it to delete all of the existing data in the config computer object and replace all of that data every time you run the import. For this example, we're going to go ahead and exist, update existing records. So for this example, this, this customer has set the import to disregard any entry in SCCM where the serial number is empty. So that way we're only importing clean data. We're only importing records where the serial number field is populated because that field is required for save in this example. So then we'll go ahead and click finish. You'll want to go ahead and test your job. 
So this uh, this test does take a, a few minutes to run. So I'm going to go ahead and jump ahead and show you the result of the test. Okay, so now you'll see that the result of the test that we ran is that it tested successfully. So now if we go ahead and close out of this and look at what the result would be when the schedule task runs, you'll see that the CMDB is now populated. The config computer object now shows all of the computers and laptops that have been imported from SCCM. So this job will run nightly. If there are any changes, it will update nightly as long as the job continues to run successfully. I hope this information helps. Please go ahead and click the subscribe button and you'll be able to view all of the other great videos that B20 puts out. Have a great day.